Why do they drop uh, six 2,000-pound bombs on a refugee camp? That's a different matter. That's a decision at the very highest levels. That's not something that uh, people on the ground were asked about. That's an Air Force matter. We've done things like that too, Judge. Oh, yes, I know that. Yes, we have. We carpet bombed uh, Germany. We did a lot of carpet bombing. Yeah, but we also did a lot of damage in Afghanistan and in Iraq. I mean, you yes. know, we had these yes. wedding parties that were attacked and people were killed that had absolutely nothing to do with one of their one well, or two individuals invited to the wedding. What is the value of international uh, war, of international law, if it's not going to be enforced and there's no accountability for its pat patent violation? You just answered your own question. International law is irrelevant unless it's enforced. Who is going to enforce it? Right, right. The problem with the United Nations. We haven't paid much attention to international law over the years. Right. We're not signatory to uh, UNCLOSE, you know, the law of the sea. Right. We, we haven't signed on for any of these things. So, you know, it's it's what we choose or choose not to do. And I think that's the case with the Israelis at this point. All I'm saying is that my experience with Israeli army officers is that they do not deliberately kill civilians. But I, if I were in command and I had tanks and armored fighting vehicles and dismounted infantry moving down a street and we took fire from a couple of buildings, I would be very reluctant to send American soldiers or Marines into those buildings right. to take out the enemy. I would say the hell with that and I would level it. You think we're going to see American Marines on the ground in Gaza? I don't know. I think uh, I think anything is possible at this stage. And I think that's something I'd like to say, because I don't think people understand certain things. First of all, from the standpoint of most Americans, well, not most Americans, but from the United States, we have no particular strategic interest in who lives in or controls Gaza. I mean, we need to understand that. Uh, it doesn't make any difference to us. Why do we care about what happens? Well, that's a different matter. It's it's now a question of do we regard the operation that is ongoing as morally appropriate or reprehensible? And I think people are watching these this film footage, seeing these images, and as much as they want to support Israel and think that Israel uh, is justifiably angry at what happened on the 7th of October, they do not think that essentially forcibly expelling uh, 1.7 million Arabs from their homes and destroying the infrastructure that supported them is justified. You know, in, in, in foreign affairs, a man named Reinhold Niebuhr wrote a great deal, and he used to say, paraphrasing Abraham Lincoln, that the challenge in American foreign policy was to link the contingencies of power with the principles of justice. That's what Americans are trying to do in their minds. I'm not sure the people in Washington are. I'm talking about the American people. Right, I understand what you're saying, but how much killing is too much killing? <laughs> uh, well, that's that's a good question. If, if Americans could have seen the things that we did in previous wars on television, in other words, in real time, the way you watch right. it in Israel, right. I think the Vietnam War would have been over in a couple of years because right. people would have demanded the withdrawal of our forces, but they didn't. So as we speak,